Fasting is not a means to force God to do what you want him to do. We don't fast because we want God. We're not making points with God. So if I fast, then you got to do this for me, God. Nope, that's not how it works. It's about getting to a place where you accept what his answer is. We begin 2016 with our third annual corporate Daniel Fast. For those of you in our listening audience who may or may not know what a Daniel Fast is, it requires a diet composed of fruits, vegetables, and nuts daily for 21 days. Now I imagine this sounds quite difficult, and to be honest, it is very difficult. However, the spiritual benefits are far greater than the physical challenge. First Lady Tamara Hombuckle, timely message entitled, The Purpose of Fasting, will focus on the key areas regarding why we fast and the spiritual benefits of doing so. Come let's join her as she explains. Amen. So praise the Lord. How's everyone doing? Bless us. Amen. 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 You know, it's a, and it's okay not to feel blessed right now. It's all right. Amen. Amen. Because God knows. God knows. Amen. So what I have for you um, is just an extension of what Pastor was talking about um, last Sunday, kind of a part two, if you may, to what he was talking about. And as you know, Pastor proclaimed um, a 21-day fast during this month of January, and we just finished our first week, going into our second week. And actually, this is the third fast that Lily of the Valley um, has been on. It's the third fast that we've participated in, and I think it's significant because this time, just about everyone in the church is fasting. And that's why I am rejoicing, because our first fast that we had Pastor met a little resistance from the members. Like, why do I have to fast? I ain't doing that. I like to eat. These are things I heard people say, not things I made up. He's crazy if he thinks I'm going to fast. I don't need to fast. I'm fine. I know my relationship with God. But instead of being obedient to the voice of God, many people opted out. And you know what? That's why their lives are in such disarray. Because they were not obedient to the word of God spoken through the pastor. So why do we set aside this time to fast? Well, we fast because we want to hear from God. I need to hear from God, and I want you to hear from God. Some of us went through the entire year of 2015 and did not hear God's voice one time. Or if you heard it, you ignored it. Or you weren't sensitive to the Spirit of God with all the other distractions and priorities that were going on in your life. Because I know, personally, I know, you get busy. And before you know it, the day, the week, the month, the year, it's over. And half of what we started doesn't get accomplished. And what we purposed to do in 2015, we look at our list, we're shaking our head like, man, I didn't do this, I didn't do this, I didn't do this, I didn't do that. So let's start off 2016 differently. Let's start that off different. So ask yourself, what does God want me to do this year? Which way does he want me to go? What's the path that he's laid out for me? Ask yourself, how do I fit in the ministry? Is God pleased with my worship? Is God pleased with my support of the ministry? Are there things that I should lay aside, get rid of, put away, stop thinking, stop saying, and stop doing? Take an inventory of your relationship with God. How healthy is it? If you don't know the answers to these questions, then now is a good time 
to fast and seek God for direction. So fasting is, it's a biblical practice. It's an established biblical practice. Moses, he fasted 40 days. The prophet Elijah, he fasted 40 days. Daniel, he fasted 21 days. Paul, he fasted. Peter, he fasted. The New Testament church fasted. Even Jesus fasted. There are also instances in the Bible where God's people would proclaim a fast, a corporate fast, and God would miraculously move on their behalf. Fasting is something that we do before God. Something we do before God, not before others. It is an intentional, listen to that, it's an intentional form of sacrifice that draws us closer to him. So go with me to the book of Isaiah, chapter 58, verses 3 through 9. And it reads, Wherefore have we fasted, say they, and thou seest not. Now this is God's people talking back to him. Wherefore have we afflicted our soul, and thou takest no knowledge? Behold, in the day of your fast, here's his answer, you find pleasure and exact all your labors. So they were asking God, Lord, we're doing this. We're doing that. You don't see us? I come to church on Sunday. You didn't see me? I put some money in the offering. You didn't see me? I shook the pastor's hand. You didn't see me? But God's like, no, 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 no. No, your your fast is for the wrong reason. He said, behold, you fast for strife and debate. How are you going to fast and you still mean? Fasting is supposed to help deliver you from that. (laughs) And smite with the fist of wickedness. Ye shall not fast as ye do this day to make your voice to be heard on high. This is what he says. Is it? Such a fast that I have chosen a day for a man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down his head as a bulrush and to spread sackcloth and ashes unto him? Wilt thou call this a fast and an acceptable day to the Lord? So the people had gotten into a a ritual. this, This was just something they did, a tradition, but it wasn't from their heart. He says, Is not this the fast that I have chosen? This is what I'm looking for. To loose the bands of wickedness. To undo the heavy burdens. And to let the oppressed go free. And that ye break every yoke. Fasting is supposed to break some chains. Fasting is supposed to set you free. Fasting is supposed, those things that are on you, it's supposed to drop off with fasting. That's the purpose of fasting. He says, is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry and that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house? Not about you. It's about others. Your fasting should be about others. When thou seekest, seest the naked that thou cover him and that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh. You know when you can't get a hold of people, it's because they don't want they don't want to give you something. When people start to hide themselves from you, they don't answer your text message, they don't answer your phone call. Amen. That's not the fast that God is talking about. And God says, if you do this, if this is your focus, that the oppressed go free, that the bands of wickedness be broken that the heavy burdens be lifted, that the hungry are fed and the poor are provided for. He says, then shall thy light break forth. This is a do this, then that. Then shall thy light break forth as the morning and thine health shall spring forth speedily and thy righteousness shall go before thee The glory of the Lord shall be thy reward. Thou shalt call and the Lord shall answer. 
Thou shalt cry, and he shall say, Here I am. Amen. Amen. You call, he'll answer. You cry, and he says, Here I am. Amen. And so some people ask, well, why do we pick January? Why not March, April, June, October? January is significant because it represents the first month of the year. It represents starting over. It's the beginning. It's not the end. And we all have resolutions for the new year. You know, we all say, well, I'm going to lose weight. I'm going to get out of debt. I'm going to exercise more. I'm going to finish some old projects, start some new projects, spend some more time with my family, learn a hobby. Well, why not start the new year off letting God know that he is your number one priority? In the Bible... Amen. Bless the Lord. Amen. You can give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Let him know that he is your number one priority. In the Bible, you know, there's many references to the word first. In Exodus chapter 20, God told the children of Israel that he was their Lord and that they were not to make or bow down to any idol gods. He said that he was a jealous God. That means he doesn't like to be ignored. When was the last time you were ignored? (laughs) You wanted to be part of the group, but they didn't invite you to their party. Best friend stopped spending time with you, stopped calling you, started wondering, what is going on? What is wrong here? How come they don't like me? Well, how do you think God feels when you do him the same way? Did you ignore him last year? Squeezing in a few minutes here and there for God. Did you only need him when times got hard? God wants to be first. How do we keep him first? The Bible says in Deuteronomy 6 and 5 that we are to love God with all our heart, soul, and might. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, David, he writes, that we are to acknowledge God in all our ways and he will direct our paths. Jesus tells us in Matthew 6 and 33 that we are to seek the kingdom of God first. In Revelations 2, the Apostle John, in his letter to the church at Ephesus, reminds them that they had left their first love and that they needed to go back and do their first work again. When we put something first, it means that person or thing is so important to us that everything else has to take a back seat. Now is the time during this fast to rethink your priorities. Some of us have gotten off track. We allow people, circumstances to take our eyes off God. Use this time to reorganize your spiritual life, just like you reorganize your closet. You put all your dresses together, all your skirts together. Well, I do that. (laughs) All your jackets together, your shoes are neatly lined up. Well, think about that when you're organizing your spiritual life. Thank God that he's given you another year, a clean slate so you can start over. The Bible says to forget those things that are behind us and to press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling which is in Christ Jesus. So with this fast you have made a great start. When you're tempted to compromise push through because of the commitment that you've made. Draw encouragement from others while you are fasting Amen. That's why I was so excited. And I'm so excited that the sisters are excited because we were able to draw encouragement from one another. 
we were able to, to ask each other, well, sis, how did you do, you know, how did you do this? How did you do that? How did you, how did, how did you, what, what scriptures did you read? You know, what prayers did you pray? You know, and it was wonderful because we are helpers one to another. Amen. When I fall short, you can pick me up. Where I'm weak, you may be strong. Where you're weak, I may be strong. That's how we help. That's how we edify one another. That's why God put gifts in the church. Different gifts. We can't all preach. We can't all sing. We can't all usher. But there's something that we can do that draws the body together. Amen. Encourage yourself in the Lord. Don't stop. Don't turn around. You remember what happened to Lot's wife when they were leaving Sodom and Gomorrah because those things back there, she wanted those, just like your body wants, desires things. She couldn't let go. And the angel told them, he practically dragged Lot and his family out of Sodom and Gomorrah because God rained fire down on Sodom and Gomorrah. And the angel said, run and don't you look back. But because that past, her desires had that hold on her, she stopped and turned around just to get one more glimpse. I just got to look one more time. Can I just, just I just got to do it one more time. I got to look, I got to listen to that one more time. I got to go here one more time, and then I won't do it no more. But you know what? That cost her. It cost her her life. Amen. So encourage yourself. Fasting is hard. It's not easy. Minister Duncanson just said it. It's not easy. It's difficult. It's tough on the body. It requires discipline. Just the thought of fasting scares people, especially if you're fasting for medical purposes. Have you ever had to fast for a medical purpose? Where the doctor tells you, I don't want you to eat nothing because I have all these tests I have to run on you. And you're nervous because you don't know what the outcome is going to be. Just like that medical fast helps you to know what's wrong with your physical body, this fast that we're on will reveal to you What's wrong with you spiritually? Don't you want to know where you're lacking spiritually so that God can help you fix it? You have to train yourself to say no. We say no to everything else. You have to train yourself to say no to what the body, what the self wants. And do you know that once you start to go on a fast, once you make that commitment that you're going to fast, you're going to seek the Lord, that you're going to pray, the enemy will begin to attack you. Am I right? He will begin to attack you because he doesn't want you to succeed. The enemy doesn't want you to have the victory. He doesn't want you to grow in your relationship with God. And in the Bible, Ephesians 6, it talks about putting on the whole armor of God because we don't wrestle against one another. We don't fight against one another. The Bible says we fight against, we wrestle against principalities. We wrestle against powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places. Fasting will help you put on the whole armor of God from head to toe so that you can stand against the enemy. So if you can just set your sights on the end result of this fast, you will begin to see what God wants to reveal in you and through you. We shared a scripture on Wednesday night, Jeremiah 29 and 11. God says, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you saith the Lord. God knows what he's thinking about you. He said thoughts of peace and not of evil. It's not God's purpose to ruin us. He says, I think peace 
towards you to give you an expected end. Things will begin to happen in your life, your family, and in the eyes of the people around you. Know that God's grace is much stronger than the enemy's weapons and that he will strengthen you. There's power in fasting and prayer. So what does fasting and prayer bring about? Are there any benefits to fasting and praying? Well, first, fasting and prayer revitalizes the body and the soul. Did you know your soul can go through seasons of drought? Where your soul is dry and you need a refreshing from the Lord. You need to recognize when you're in your dry season. You need to realize, you need to know when or notice when you don't pray as much as you used to pray. You don't fast as much as you used to pray. You don't share with your coworkers about God as much as you used to. You're about to go into a dry season and you need a refreshing from God. Psalm 63, David says, Oh God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. My soul thirsteth for thee. My flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land. Here David recognizes, God, something's not right. Something's not right. I need a refreshing. I need a refreshing. Be sensitive to the urging of God to seek him. David says, I want to see your power. I want to see your glory because your loving kindness is better. It's better than life. My lips shall praise thee. I'll bless you while I live. I'll lift my hands in your name. Hosea 6 and 3 says, Then shall we know if we follow on to know the Lord. So there's something that you have to do. Then shall you know, just like back in Isaiah, where he says, if you do the fast this way, then your light will break forth. God says, if you follow on to know me, then your going forth will be prepared as the morning. And God himself, shall come to us like rain, like the latter rain and the former rain upon the earth. And you know how it is when it rains. Everything is washed. Amen. Hosea 10 and 12 says, Sow to yourselves in righteousness. Reap in mercy. Break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord. Why? Till he come and rain righteousness on us. Acts chapter 19, Peter tells the people to repent. And when they repent, the time of refreshing will come from the Lord. So during this fast, if you're in a dry season, even if you're not in a dry season, because that's what the latter rain is for, ask God, seek for his refreshing. Seek for the spiritual rain to wash away all of that debris from last year. Ask God to wash me and make me clean. You don't have to go into this year carrying all of that that was on you last year. So secondly, fasting and prayer brings about brokenness. We said it brings about a revitalization, a reviving, a re-energizing of your body and your soul, but it also brings about brokenness. 
Psalms 51 and 17 says the sacrifices, and that's what the fast is, it's a sacrifice. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite, that means sorrowful heart. Oh God, thou will not despise broken, broken spirit, a broken spirit. Amen. Amen. God can't use you if you're hard-headed, if you're stiff-necked. Even Jesus told the the Pharisees and the Sadducees, he talked to them about being so stiff-necked. You can't tell me nothing. That's what stiff-necked is. I'm grown. God, sometimes he has to break you down. You remember he had to do that with Paul. Remember Paul? Or Saul, amen, Saul, before he became Paul. Saul was something else. He was determined. He was like, you know what, I'm tired of all these Christians. I'm going to get rid of all of them. King, write me a letter. I'm going to go round them up. Saul was very stiff-necked. He was very adamant. I'm right. You're wrong. But God had to break him down. And fasting, Lord have mercy. Y'all know fasting will break you down won't it? It will break you down. Amen. God says, or or David says, a broken and a contrite, sorrowful heart. God will not turn away. Joel 2 and 12 says, therefore also now saith the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart and with fasting and with weeping, and with mourning, and rend your heart, and not your garments, and turn unto the Lord your God. Remember we said earlier about fasting. It's a matter of your heart. Amen. In, in Joel, the, uh, the prophet Joel is telling the people, this is what you need to do. Return to God with weeping. With mourning, that's a broken spirit. That is a sorrowful heart. He says, rend your heart. Amen. There's a, there's a, a scripture in the Bible where God says to break up that fallow ground. Break up that stony heart. Because in, in this fast, as God, and I'm about to cry now. Y'all know I'm a cry baby. In this fast, as God begins to reveal to you, as he begins to soften you, as he, as you become more sorrowful, you will begin to weep. You will begin to cry. You will begin to mourn before the Lord. Fix me, God. You know what I need, God. Work it out. Work it out. It says that God is gracious. He is merciful. He's slow to anger, of great kindness. When you begin to fast and empty yourself before the Lord, your life, it becomes an open book before God. And as he shows you yourself, as he shows you yourself, not as he shows me somebody else, as he shows me, me, myself, amen, the tears of repentance will begin to flow. You'll begin to tell God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, God. Forgive me. Forgive me, Lord. And you will begin to... You begin to repent. You realize how much you need God when he begins to show you the areas in your life that need to be addressed. Evaluate your standing with God. Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 that when we participate in communion, we are to examine ourselves so that we do not participate unworthily. I may not know. The pastor may not know. 
Your children may not know. The people sitting next to you may not even know. But you know, God knows. God knows. Get to the point where you realize that your walk with God is more than just, I went to church on Sunday. More than just, I put some money in the offering plate. Now is the time to seek the Lord. David records in Psalms 27 and 8, he says, When thou saidest, seek my face, my heart said unto thee, thy face, Lord, will I seek. David also wrote Psalms 105 and 4, seek the Lord, seek his strength, seek his face ever more. He also wrote the same in First Corinthians six, First Chronicles, excuse me, sixteen and eleven. Seek the Lord and His strength. Seek His face evermore. Thirdly, fasting and prayer helps you to become more sensitive to the natural and spiritual things around you. Now, let me know if this is true. Since you've been fasting. Just the smell of certain foods become more noticeable. Am I right? Certain foods become more noticeable. It's like your nose picks up every ingredient in that cookie. You're like, I smell cinnamon. I smell nutmeg. I smell chocolate. I smell everything. And in my case, coffee. I got in the car with Pastor and we were riding. I said, I smell coffee. Is there, co- is there some coffee in the car? Did somebody leave a cup in the car? It's like I was so sensitive. (laughs) I was so sensitive that I smelled that coffee. (laughs) But fasting is the same way. It helps us to focus on listening to the voice of God. It sharpens our dependence on God. Because there's nothing worse than a wishy-washy Christian. Because in the book of Revelations, Jesus, through the revelator John, spoke to the church in Laodicea. And remember what he told them? He said, I wish you were either hot or cold. I wish you were hot or cold, because then I, 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 I can deal with that because I know where you stand. You're hot or you're cold. You're in or you're out. You're right or you're wrong. But, but because you're lukewarm, because you're wishy-washy, he said, I'm going to spit you out. Just like lukewarm water. And I don't like the taste of lukewarm water. You know we like to put some ice in the water. We like the water to be cold. That's what is most refreshing. God said, I can't even, I can't stand that. I can't even stand it. I can't even, your, your, the, your sacrifice, I can't stand it because I don't know where you stand. Because you're with me today and you're not with me next week. You're straddling the fence. Amen. You're wishy-washy. God's looking for commitment. He is looking for people that are committed. Not only do you profess what you believe, You live what you believe. Amen. Amen. Remember the man that Jesus healed from blindness? And Jesus asked him, so how how, how do you see things now? How do you see? How do you see? And the man said, well, I see see men as trees. His vision was still a little bit blurry. He, He still couldn't see clearly, so Jesus had to touch him again. He had to touch his eyes again. And when he asked him the second time, How do you see? He said, I see clearly now. I can see now. And that's what fasting does for you. It takes all that blurriness out. It takes all that, 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 you know, that, that takes the blinders off of your eyes so that you can see clearly. It heightens your spiritual senses so that you can see and so that you can hear from God. I encourage you to have a purpose. Have a purpose for your fasting. What do you want God to do for you? Determine your purpose. Do you need a miracle? Do you need a miracle in your family? Do you need a miracle in your finances? Do you need a miracle in your health? 
Do you need doors to open for you? Do you need direction? Do you need revelation from God? Whatever you need from God. And this is what we talked about on Wednesday. Write it down. Write it down. Amen. I think I heard um, Sister Eureka, Missionary Eureka, talk about how in Hosea, he said, write the vision. Habakkuk, thank you. Write the vision. Make it plain. Amen. Have a purpose. Have a focus for your fast. Amen. Even ask your children. Amen. Even Sister Casey brought that up. Asking your children, what can I pray for you for? Mommy's on a fast. Daddy's on a fast. What can we pray for you for? I ask my children. I ask my children. And my daughter, and I, and I shared this with the sisters, my daughter said, Mommy, can, can you pray? Can you pray for my hair? And some of you don't know, Shirley has a condition where her body attacks her hair, and it just makes her hair come out. It just comes out in clumps. And she just said, Mommy, I, I just, can you just pray for my hair? And I said, is there anything else you want me to pray for? You want me to pray for school? Or you want me to pray for your friends? You? He goes, no, Mommy, I just want you to pray for my hair. And I said, all right, sweetie, I'll put that down, and Daddy and I will add that to our list to fast and pray for what you need. That's what she wanted. I didn't consider that insignificant. Like, how come you're not fasting for? Nope. That's what she wanted. And I said, I will pray for that. Amen. Amen. This will help you focus on your purpose. When you're alone with God, you're petitioning him for your needs. You're reading scripture, talking to him in prayer. He will begin to speak to you. But remember that fasting is not a means to force God to do what you want him to do. We don't fast because we want God. We're not making points with God. So if I fast, then you got to do this for me, God. Nope, that's not how it works. It's about getting to a place where you accept what his answer is. He may say yes. He may say no. He may say wait. Even as Jesus said in the, in the garden when he went before the Father, he said, you know what, God? Not my will. But thy will, thy will be done. Amen. Amen. So whatever you have before the Lord, the petitions that you have before him, just step out on faith. Amen. Don't let this be another year of lack another year of anger, another year of depression, indifference, amen, spiritual poverty. Many of you have sacrificed what you're used to eating, bread. My husband said, babe, I eat a lot of bread, and he's right. I can't even make a sandwich. Meat, uh, sweets, chips, coffee, soda, and other things, and, you, and it's been grueling on your body because your body is used to having a piece of candy at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Your body's used to that. <laughs> and some of you have even gone so far as to give up social media, and I applaud you because you know, you know where your weaknesses are. Just know that these things, as you continue your fast, these things become less of a priority and that your spirit will come alive. The longer you stop doing something, the less of a hold it'll have on you. Amen? Amen. Psalms 51 says, David tells God to purge. That means to remove something that's not wanted get rid of. He asked God to purge him and to create a clean heart and renew a right spirit in him. Somewhere along the way, his spirit got dull. Our spirits get dull. Our lights grow dim. Our grip begins to loosen. We need God to regenerate, revive, and rebuild our spirits. Ask God to renew your spirit, to cleanse you from all of that garbage, 
from last year. David had a repentant heart. He said, purge me. Take it out. You know what you don't want in your life. Ask God, take it away. I don't want this. I don't like this. I don't want to be like this. In Romans 12 and 1, Paul says, I beseech you, which means I beg you. I'm asking you. I'm pleading with you that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. We are presenting our bodies to Christ through this sacrifice of fasting. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed, but be ye transformed that by the renewing of your mind. And that's what fasting does. It transforms your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. All God will do is substitute what you lost with something new. So let him substitute joy for sadness. Let him substitute a pleasant attitude for your anger. Praise instead of complaint. Freedom instead of oppression. Forgiveness instead of holding grudges. Positivity for negativity. Initiative instead of laziness. Right instead of wrong. A giving heart instead of stinginess. Yes for no. I can for I can't. I will for I won't. Let this fast renew your mind and your spirit. Are you expecting something from God during this fast? Use that as your incentive. If you do that, God will bless you and meet you in your need. Answers that you're waiting for will be found in the presence of the Lord. In Daniel 10 and 12, it says, Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set your heart to understand, to chasten thyself before God, thy words were heard. So from the beginning of your fast, when you determine in your heart, determine in your mind, when you set yourself, when you begin to afflict yourself before God, and you began to pour out to him what you needed from him during this fast, he heard you. He said, your words were heard. And then this is what I like. He says, and I am come for your words. Because you asked, I'm coming. Because you desired, here I am. I'm coming. Just because of what you said. I come for your words. Amen. Pa fasting is a powerful weapon, and it can change God's mind. When we begin to unite together, mentor, pray with, support, and encourage one another like we're doing now, it will affect us. Amen. It will affect your children. It will affect the people you work with everyone around you. You'll begin to see miracles happen in your life and the lives of others. God will begin to change you. Those habits you couldn't stop will break off all of a sudden. You'll begin to feel lighter, less weighted down. In Jonah chapter 3, starting at verse 5, it talks about how when Jonah finally made up his mind, and did what God told him to do, the people of Nineveh believed God and proclaimed a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them even to the least of them. So the entire city went on a fast because God had sent Jonah to warn the people that if they did not correct their ways, he was going to destroy the entire city. 
And it says here that the people began to repent and turn from their wickedness. And in chapter verse 9, it says, who can tell? Because remember I said fasting can change God's mind. He said, who can tell if God will turn and repent and turn away from his fierce anger that thou perish not? Amen. In 2 Kings or 1 Kings 21 verse 25, when the prophet Elijah confronted Ahab because Ahab and his wife Jezebel, King Ahab and Queen Jezebel, they plotted against Naboth because Ahab wanted what Naboth had. He wanted his land and Naboth wouldn't give it to him. And so he went to his wife, Jezebel, and she set it up where Naboth was killed. And they took his land and Elijah went to Naboth and began to tell him what God was going to do because what he had done was evil. It says that, and it came to pass when Ahab heard these words that he rent his clothes and put sackcloth upon his flesh and fasted and lay in sackcloth and went softly. And the word of the Lord came to Elijah. So when Ahab began to think about what he had done, when he began to feel sorrowful, when he began to repent, God sent Elijah back, told him, go back to Ahab. Because he said, see how Ahab humbleth himself before me? Because he humbleth himself before me, I will not bring evil to his house. Because he fasted, because he prayed, because he repented, because he humbled himself. God changed his mind. Joel 2 verse 14 says, Who knoweth if he will return and repent? Who knoweth if God, you don't know. Who knoweth if he will return and repent and leave a blessing for you? Leave a blessing behind for you. Amen. Fasting can stop things from happening. It can stop things from happening. Amen. So be encouraged and know that what you're doing, that this fast is not in vain. Give it your best effort. And watch God begin to do a new thing in your life. I guarantee if you stay with it, If you stay with this fast, if you remain committed, amen, if you pray and you read your scriptures, amen, you won't regret it. You will not regret it, amen. Am I right? Amen. You won't regret it. We haven't gotten to the end yet. But amen. There's a greater reward at the end, amen. And if any of you um, were in sports, Amen. Particularly track. I used to run track in high school. Amen. And believe you me, getting to the finish line, that is overwhelming. Amen. Because you've been running in circles and you're just running and running and you're about to get tired and you want to give up. And then there's people behind you nipping at your your heels and you're like, I don't think I'm going to make it. I'm sweating. I'm thirsty. Amen. But when you see that sign, you see that big sign at the end that says F-I-N-I-S-H, you get a little more pep. You're like, hmm. You start running a little bit faster, don't you? A little bit faster. And then when you run through and you break that tape, oh my goodness, you are so excited. Amen. Amen. So purpose in your heart to get, look, look, look up. Picture that in your mind. Finished. Amen. And make it to the end. Amen. God bless all of you. Amen. I want to thank you for taking time to listen to this message. Know that God loves and cares for you deeply. You know, we all have struggles in our life, tough times, and much more. 
but God is about to do great things in your life. Remember the scripture found in Galatians 6 and 9, and let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. It's your season for breakthrough. Don't give up. Don't stop. Trust God to bring you through. God bless you. I would like to take the time to thank all listeners of the Lily Kojic Podcast. I pray that you or someone close to you was truly blessed by the messages that we bring to you weekly. As we go forward, we ask that you share the podcast with as many people as possible. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 7 states, So neither is he that plants anything, neither is he that waters, but God gives the increase. Our goal is to expand this ministry to reach more people with the good news of the gospel. You can help us achieve that goal by supporting us with a donation of any amount. We have a donation button located on our podcast page that will allow you to support this ministry. Thank you and God bless.